omega squared. Again. So you never have to go through that entire guess and check solution that we did. Just know these are the solutions to whatever you end up writing for a simple harmonic oscillator. What you have to do every time is figure out what to plug in here. So for this problem, for our simple pendulum, the solution will be theta equals theta max cosine, what do we plug in now for omega? Uh, G over L. Square root G over L T plus phi. And this is the solution for what? Oh, just this one, just the simple pendulum. And just like drag force, every time you get a new problem, you got to start from scratch and come up with a new answer. Same with pendulums every or, or simple harmonic oscillators. Depending upon what they give you, you're going to have to go through and derive and come up with something that works for that situation. All right, how would we pull the period out of this? We said omega from pre-calc. We know omega is equal to what? 2 pi over t. So to find the period, again, we just said omega equal to omega. We know one of them from the mathematics of sine functions and cosine functions is 2 pi over t. And the other one we got for a very specific problem we know is the square root of G over L. G over L. So solve for t, and what do we get? t equals 2 pi square root L over G. Which is also on the AP equation sheet. And once again, did my amplitude, theta max, show up in this equation? It did not, so again, it doesn't matter really how far you pull it back. Except for this one, we do have the caveat that we can't make the angle very big. Otherwise, it's not a simple harmonic oscillator. All right. How are we feeling? Good. All right. We'll do a compound pendulum. Then we're going to give you a little break. So what on earth is a compound pendulum? That thing is definitely a compound pendulum. It's basically any pendulum that's not a simple pendulum. So any pendulum that's not just a ball you know, hanging on the end of a massless string. So compound pendulums can have bulk to them. They can have mass to them. So it could be, um, you know, it could be like I could have a triangle pin, and the triangle could be spinning, you know, rotating back and forth. That would be a compound pendulum. I could have a like a thick piece of wood pinned somewhere, rotating back and forth. That would be a compound pendulum. So we're going to do a very generic one. And I think I just make it a big rectangle shape. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, where do I do my pendulum? Here it is. So we're going to have a compound pendulum. So who knows, there it is. It's just going to be something that's oscillating through some angle. Again, what's creating the restoring torque on this pendulum? Gravity. gravity. But now, where are we going to draw gravity? At the center of mass. We can't just draw it willy-nilly anywhere we want. We have to draw it at the center of mass. So. I don't know whether this is uniformly distributed, non-uniformly distributed. I'm going to just say, there's my center of mass, so I'm going to draw gravity there. Okay. All right. Would they ever give us a compound pendulum that didn't have a uniform? I've never seen it. Technically, could they? Yes, because... Within the scope of what you need to know for the exam, you need to be able to calculate 
the rotational inertia of a bar that doesn't have a uniform density. So they could make it like part of a big problem where they make you first find the eye of something with, I've never seen it. I think it would probably be a huge question, but, um, but they technically would fall in the realm of what is possible. I've just never seen them do it. So, but we'll show you the theory just in case, and then we'll do that one, but we'll do that after we take a break. All right, so again, we know that, again, it's a pendulum, so instead of dealing with uh, net force equals I alpha, we're gonna deal with, I mean, net force equals MA. <laughs> we're gonna deal with what? Net torque equals I alpha. Now, let's put some variables in here. And we'll say, what do you want to call the distance from the pinpoint to the center of mass? Mile. Um, so, well, let's give it a letter. Do we want to? R. 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 Do you want to call it R? Mm. We'll call it R. So R is the distance from the axle to the center of mass. So whatever it's ro whatever point it's rotating around. All right, so when we calculate the neck torque, what are we gonna write down? What's causing the torque again? Gravity. Gravity. Energy. And what is the R from the pivot point to the place that it's applied? We called it R. So it's going to be R. The F is going to be mg, and again, we're going to have the sine of theta because that's the angle between R and F. Now, what are we plugging on the right side? I. Do I know the I of this? We could potentially have to figure it out, which we're going to have to for that one. But this I that shows up with this equation would be the I about the pivot point. So not necessarily the I about the center of mass. It has to be the I about the pivot point. So we'll put that down as I and then alpha. Okay, you tell me, so do your substitutions, get it in the right form, and you tell me what omega is for this one. So figure out what omega is. So do the next, the substitutions. We are going to again assume Theta is small, so knowing that, we'll be able to do our little small angle approximation. So we can get, be able to get rid of the sine theta. So you tell me when you're done, you tell me what omega is, and tell me what the period is. And then we'll do it together.
All right, does anybody have a solution for the equation? What is theta going to equal? Dead silence. <laughs> I guess we'll do it together. <laughs> All right, let's go through it. So again, we know it's for very small angles, so right away we can get rid of what? The sine. The sine. So the sine is gone. We're going to do what with the alpha? D squared theta over dt squared. And yet again, I forgot to write it with the negative as the restoring torque. That's my bad. I keep forgetting to do that today. I don't know why. All right, so we're going to write it in what form? D squared theta over dt squared equals, well, if we divide by i, we get plus rmg over i theta equals zero. So what do we find out from here? We find out that what's omega squared? All this mess is omega squared. So we could say the solution to this then is going to be theta equals theta max. What do we plug in here? The whole rmg over i all square rooted t plus phi. Oh, I lost my cosine. Yes. Theta equals theta max cosine square root rmg over i times t plus phi. How do we do there? Okay, awesome. And um, finally, what are we going to do? We're going to find the period. We said omega equal to omega. 2 pi over t equals the square root rmg over i. So what do we get for the period? 2 pi the square root of i over rmg, where r and i are very specifically these two things here. The i about the pivot point and the r the distance from the center of mass. All right, how do we do? All right, good. Let's take like a five-minute break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to have you predict the period of this, and then we'll look at some AP problems and stuff. Unless you don't want to take a break, we'll keep going. Oh, I need a break. Okay. <laughs> I figured most people would need